Good morning, my dearly beloved Greater Galilee Missionary Baptist Church family. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord again. Amen. For those of you watching by YouTube and Facebook this morning, we want to greet you, welcome you to the Greater Galilee Missionary Baptist Church here in the great city of Little Rock, Arkansas. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We have to give honor to God, to our videographer, Deacon J.J. Uh, Jr., and my wife out. Uh, so glad to have them in the building with me today. Amen. But this is a good day in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, we are still practicing social distancing. Amen. We are still practicing. Amen. Washing our hands. Amen. And also, we are also still practicing wearing this mask. Amen. It's very important that we wear the mask, amen. And then I tell you, uh, I, I believe in my heart that uh, our numbers will begin to uh, decrease, amen, once we just follow the instructions that has been laid out for us, amen. There's a word from the Lord today, amen. And uh, uh, I, before I get into that, I just want to let my uh, church family to know that I miss you. And uh, if God say so, when he say so, we'll be back together again in person. Uh, but we have to be cautious and be careful. Amen. It's not that we are afraid, but we do know how we love to embrace and hug. And uh, but that's, the kind of, that's how we express our love here at Greater Galilee. Amen. And I, I just want you to know that that's just the way we are and uh, we just, I don't believe we just, I don't, I just don't believe we act right, <laughs> you know, uh, simply because of our relationship with one another here at Greater Galilee. But uh, there's a word from the Lord today, and we'll be coming out of Romans 10, uh, verses 8 through 10. Romans 10, 8 through 10. Beginning with verse 8, you find these words recorded. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that, that is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in that heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers of his word. Let us have a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come once again in the name of Jesus. We come, Father, with thanksgiving on our hearts. We thank you for allowing us another opportunity just to come together and share what you have put on our heart to the hearers and listeners this morning. Father, we ask your blessing upon our church family as we continue to practice the guidelines that you set before us. Father God, in following the instructions, Father, we pray that uh, all that we do uh, is pleasing in your sight. And Father, we do know distractions come and distractions go. Seem like now they, they're coming more than they're leaving. But, Father, we just trust you today. And we just ask God you bless those under the sound of my voice, those who are sick, those who are going through, those who have lost loved ones. We pray, God, your comforting uh, protection, your comfort and protection will be around them, Father. We ask that you bless our doctors, our nurses, our health care workers, Father God, and those who are in control, who are in charge. We know you are in control, but those who you have appointed to take care of the business here on this earth. And we'll forever give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. We pray, amen. Amen. God bless you today. We'll be using that as a thought today. God's plan of salvation. God's plan of salvation. 
you know, growing up, growing up, I, uh, bricklayer and uh, in construction work, uh, the first thing, uh, we learn how to do the laboring part, but when you get up and you, you, you uh, advance on into becoming a um, brick layer, brick mason, uh, they have a plan. They always lay plans, especially when you are getting ready to put in a layer foundation uh, for a house. You have to have a plan. And some of you might be asking, what is a plan? Well, a plan is typically a diagram a list of steps with details. Amen. You have to follow the details. If not, you might uh, put up uh, the foundation wrong. You might have the corners off. Amen. But if you have a detailed instruction as to how to uh, build a house, amen, that house will be built in the right way. Amen. So uh, a plan is very, very important. And God had a plan. He had a plan when he, when he made before the foundation of this world, God had a plan. Amen. He had a plan. We, uh, we spoke to you a couple of weeks ago, amen, uh, from sin to sanctification. Amen. And, uh, we, we told you that sanctification was the process uh, by which we must follow, uh, and it's described in the book of Romans, which is known as the roadmap to salvation. Amen. Uh, and sanctification uh, is part of the process, amen, by which God's grace takes for the believer to be separated from sin and then become dedicated, amen, to God's righteousness accomplished by the word of God. Now, this was God's plan. Before the foundation of the world, God had a plan. If I could use uh, Moses this morning, amen, God had a plan for Moses to go down in Egypt to tell Pharaoh, to let uh, my people go. And when Moses said, who should I say? Simon, just tell him I am sent you. Amen. And Moses, he tried to make all kind of excuses, but God had a plan for Moses. Even from the beginning, from the time he was born, God had a plan for Moses to go down. And that was his major plan, to go down and uh, tell Pharaoh to let the children of Israel go. Amen. And praise be to God today that uh, even he has some uh, instructions. You remember when uh, he did, Pharaoh finally let them go. Uh, he got behind them. Amen. And uh, the Bible said that uh, and, and, and going after them, uh, there was a Red Sea and mountains on each side and Pharaoh's army behind. But God's plan was to take them to a point where they could believe in God and not worry about the circumstances of their surroundings. Uh, you know how we do when we come to the forks of our road. We really don't know which way to go. But God had a plan. Amen. And I, and I, I thank God for him having the plan. But as, as the story goes with Moses, and I'm going to move on, Oh, uh, they got to the Red Sea. You remember that, don't you? Amen. And uh, they were mumbling, where can we go now? Where are we going now? And Moses even got a little bit concerned. And uh, God just told Moses, stand still. Amen. Tell them to just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And that's when God parted the Red Sea. He had a plan. Because something about God, he already know. He already knew, he knew Adam was going to sin from the beginning of time. Amen. When he made Adam, uh, he knew that he was going to uh, sin and mess up. Amen. He already knew that. Uh, but I want you to know today, uh, for the believer to be separated from sin and become dedicated to God's righteousness, it's only accomplished by the word of God. 
Sanctification results holiness, and holiness, amen, uh, uh, purification, uh, it is, uh, it is um, uh, uh, from the guilt of the power of sin. That's when you become holy, amen, and purified. You're purified from the guilt because you know how we do sometimes. We have a guilty conscience. The Holy Spirit will, con amen, will remind us, if you will, and, and consciously we cannot rest asleep if we do something, uh, if we do something sinful and, and, and know about it, amen. I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm human and I do feel uh, guilty sometimes and I do have a conscience sometimes. Uh, so I just want you to know today that uh, once we are saved, now I know uh, some of you, when you got saved, you, it was a, just a complete change, amen, overnight you became all that God wanted you to be. I, I, I know some of you are like that, but I, it took me a while, I'm a little slow, if you will, and it took me a little while to get there. But when we, when we are saved, it's up to us to walk in the purpose, amen, by which God has called us, amen. I say once we are saved, when we are saved, it's up to us to walk in the purpose by which God has called us. In other words, we have to do something. We have to work on ourselves, amen, to walk in the purpose of God. We identify with the understanding, amen, uh, that we are once, we were once lost, amen, and, and needed salvation. And what we do, we admit, we admit, we admit it. I had to admit that I was sinner, I was sinner, and I was lost. And that's the first thing we have to do, my brothers and sisters. God's plan is for you to admit that you are a sinner, and I, I, I was lost in sin. I don't know about you, but I was lost in sin. So what we do, we confess to God, amen, of our sins, and then we will repent. That's God's plan, amen. And sometimes we try to change the plan. It's just like we, us putting in a foundation, amen, and we, and we uh, get the corners off. It's not going to work. Uh, God gave us detailed instruction, amen, of how to be saved, amen. He had a plan, he had a plan, amen. We believe in our heart, say believe, amen. We will believe in our heart, that innermost being, that spirit, that real you, amen. We, we have to believe, amen. We have to believe in our heart that God is the only one that can save us from our sins. Amen. We have to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. We have to believe that. Amen. If, if we want to be saved, we have to believe that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. We confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Can I get a witness here? The Son of God. And, and after completing these three steps, amen, accepting and admitting, amen, that you're a sinner, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, amen, and then confess, amen, that Jesus Christ is Lord and the Son of the living God. And after we complete these, according to the word of God, you are now saved and have eternal life in Christ Jesus. That ought, it ought to be a shout right there. Amen. Once you believe, amen, and you accept, admit that I'm a sinner, you believed in your heart, that innermost part of you, that, 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 that real you, you believe that God raised him from the dead, didn't confess that, he is the Son of God. Romans 10, 10 says that, uh, but with the heart man believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession 
is made unto salvation. Now, to receive God's plan, you must have a desire, say a desire. To receive this plan, you must have a desire. You must have a desire. You must have a better understanding of God and want to know him. You must have a desire to want to know God. You have to have a desire to want to understand God. I know some of you out there might be saying, if I, if I really understand what God uh, wants from me, I'm going to have to give up a whole lot of other stuff. Amen. Well, if that's the way you feel, you might need to give up that other stuff that you're, that you're holding on to because you're comfortable doing what you're doing. But you have to admit, when it's not of God, it's sin. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Yeah. Uh, you may want to improve. Those of, those of you who know God but are, are slowful, amen, you might. You may want to improve your relationship with with him. Uh, You may want to overcome the negative pattern you see in your life, which are destroying you and your relationships, your family. You might be doing something that you see your family falling apart. Your friends are few. They're walking around not because you decide to do the right thing, you know, friends will leave you. I don't care how close they are when the, when the going get tough. Amen. When the going get rough. Amen. The tough get going. Those who there you thought would be there for you are not there. Do I have a witness here today? Amen. Or maybe you just want a better quality of life. The good thing about it is today... <laughs> You hear God's word, knowing that he has a plan for you. You you weren't born to just be born. God have a purpose and a plan for your life. Amen. And today, you can receive peace, joy, happiness. You can receive understanding. Amen. There might be some stuff you don't want to give up right now. But I do want you to know God's plan is to save you. Amen. Keep you from destroying uh, yourself and those around you, those you love and you cherish. God has a plan. And the only way really, my brothers and sisters, these things could happen is that you have to really, really want him to be a part of your life. His plan, his plan is to be a part of your life. The Bible teaches that God, that God desires to share his love with you. That's God's desire. He wants to share that love that he has for you. In the Garden of Eden, my God, God walked and he talked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. My brothers and sisters, that's what God wants to do. That's what he wants to do with you and me today. Amen. He, yeah, his desire is to impart and share his love with us and for us. And to share our hearts with him every morning. When you get up early in the morning, (laughs) just get up and share your heart with God. Amen. And I found out uh, once you fail to do that, anything might happen that day you won't even understand. But once you get up in the morning, ask God to bless you throughout that day. His plan is that he wants you to do that. He wants you to share your heart with him. Amen. Before our day begins, he wants us to share our hearts with him. Tell him how much we love him. Tell him how much you depend on him. 
how you trust him to watch you throughout your day. I hope I'm helping someone here today, amen, but uh, I want you to know God's plan is not to destroy us, amen. And, and this is going on around, it, it, it wasn't in God's plan, but he had a, uh, he had a solution, amen. He's the only one that can uh, stop sin, amen. And I, I, I know you wonder, why are you speaking on this, this is something that uh, we all know about God's plan of salvation, and we all know about God. And well, y- y- yes, I believe you know something about God, but I-, I see so much going on around us that it's hard for me to believe that uh, you know uh, anything about God. Sometimes, the way things are going on, even from what went on a few weeks ago in Washington D.C. Amen. You know, a lot of Christian folk was in there. Amen. And so they they know about God, but they don't know God. They don't they they they, they got lost in the shuffle. Amen. I don't care how you were taught down through the years. Amen. God's plan. A lot of this stuff wasn't in God's plan. Amen. Because man does what man want to do when he want to do it. Can I get a witness here? So I, I, I would just like to say, uh, share when you get up in the morning. You don't know what your day is going to be like. Amen. Uh, but once you share your concern with God in the, that early that morning before your feet hit the floor, amen, uh, have a little talk with the Lord. Amen. He began to work things out for you. Amen. Uh, as our creator and sustainer, he knows what we need. Can I get a witness? I said, as our sustainer, amen, as our creator, he knows what we need. He knows when we need it. Amen. And he will show us how to manage what we have when we get it. Amen. He'll do that. He, he, he'll do that. Uh, uh, he'll show us how to take care of what he has blessed us with. Amen. He's that kind of God, my brothers and sisters, even more than we do. He, he, he knows what we need. He knows uh, how to get it to us. When we can't even see how, he already had, it's already in his plan. Can I get it with it? And he has a plan for this pandemic that's going on. If there's nothing else, it's bringing families closer together. Amen. Yes, we lost a lot of lo- we have lost a lot of friends and loved ones, but God, He still has a plan. Can I, and and let, let me say this: There's nothing wrong with dying. I'm gonna say it again: When you have your business in order. Amen. Because the Bible teaches us that when we leave this earth, we'll be with the Lord. Amen. And once we're absent from this body, we'll be with the Lord. And isn't that what we are plan? Isn't that our plan? Isn't that what we uh, are, are striving for? To one day be with that that Lord, that God who who created everything, who spoke into nothing and something became. Amen. I mean, that's what I strive for. Yeah, I have loved ones that's going on. I want to see them too. Amen. uh, But I really want to see the one who made it possible for us to, amen, (laughs) reunite together. Amen. When songwriting, when when all of God's children get together, what a time! What a time it will be. They said we're going to sit down by the banks of the river. Oh, what a time! Amen. Our relationship. Maybe your relationship with God has been shattered, but listen. Our relationships may have been shattered. But when we confess, yes, sinners, 
Yes, say, folk. <laughs> Amen. We make mistakes as well. But what we do is go to God. Amen. Repent. Yes, we, we, we repented of the sin when we were a sinner. Even those of us who are saved and, and make mistakes sometimes still have to repent. Amen. We have to turn away from that sin that we, that, that we committed. Mm. Amen. And he can restore that broken relationship with God. How you do it? You honor Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, a Christian, that, that, that means being Christ-like. We honor him by living for him. Isn't that right? We honor Jesus as Lord and receiving the sacrifice of Jesus' life for our sins. We honor Jesus. We honor his life for our sins. You know what he did. The steps are clearly laid out in the word of God. Romans 10, 13 tells us that for whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Isn't that all right? It's all you do is call upon the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Why do you say it? Because, number one, you can't get to the Father <laughs> it's you, it, unless you come by way of Jesus Christ. And how you come by way of Jesus Christ is to believe in him. Believe that he paid that price. John 5, 24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believe on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation. It is passed from death to life. Amen. John 10 also, amen, 10, 28 and 29 says, And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Amen. And that 29th verse says, My Father, which gave them me. Listen at that. My Father, who gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. My brothers and sisters, God loves you. We have to believe in him today. We have to believe that uh, he is the God who loves us all. Loves us so much that he gave all he had. He gave himself. Amen. To come down, leave his throne in glory. To come down and die on a cross. For our sin, because we have gotten so far out of hand, God wants us to come back to him. And his plan is that once we receive Jesus, yes, we'll make mistakes, but we'll repent of our sins and call on the name of the Lord, and he will hear us and answer us. And he will turn us, he will restore us, Back to our heavenly father. How did he do it? I'm glad you asked. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross. Yes, my brothers and my sisters. He died up there on that cross. One Friday evening, didn't do anybody any wrong. He wasn't found guilty. Amen. The only thing he was guilty of was, was, was being a righteous man. But they, they, they did all they could to find fault with it. But what he did, he knew that we would be going through the same thing. 
we'll be experiencing the same thing because of who we follow and who we believe in. But his plan was to have all of those who believe accept him. Amen. That's who he died for. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. Can I get a witness here? Yes, he died, but put him in a grave. But early one Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. That's God's plan. If we accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the Redeemer of this world, I'm talking about Jesus now. Amen. was part of God's plan to get us back to him. Can I get a witness here? And right now, Jesus is still working. He's, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and I. And I want you to know today all he asks us to do is accept him, admit that we are sinners, accept him, believe in him, that God raised him from the dead on that third day morning and then confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ, the ABCs, accept him, admit it, believe and confess it. And everything will work out for you. When you find yourself can't make it, just call on him. I found out that he's never too busy. You can call him in the morning, call him at noonday, call him late in the midnight hour. He hears and he answers your prayer. So my brothers and sisters, I'm preparing to close. Let's trust God. He'll see you through. I know the pandemic has us all frustrated. People taking their lives, but just trust God. He'll see us through. He said, if you could just hold on a little while longer, I'll pull you through this. But you have to trust in me. Can I get a witness here today? So my brothers and sisters, Accept God's plan of salvation, and everything will work out for your good. God bless. God keep you is our prayer today. Amen. Accept him today. The door of the church is open. Come my letter, Christian experience a candidate for baptism. Amen. He will receive you just as you are. I don't know about you, but I came to Jesus. I was weary, wounded, and sad. But guess what? I found in him a resting place, and he had made me glad. Oh, yes, I'm glad today that I have made up my mind that I was going to follow Jesus. The door of the church is open. Won't you come today? Yeah, you, you, if you're saying, well, I, 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 I have a few more. <laughs> I have a few more things I got to get. I want you to know that few more things might take you a lifetime. But if you accept them, those few things might, might come a little quicker. Amen. Amen. You might get it straightened out a little quicker because you'll have someone to help you. Won't you come today? The door is open. Amen. And we will send you wherever you want to go. You might not want to be a part of you. You go to the, the Bible says you need to join the church closest to you. Amen. If you, and I'd love to have you here at Greater Galilee, but go to the church that's closest to you that's, that's teaching you the word of God. Amen. And uh, you'll be okay. All we want to do is get you in the house somewhere. Amen. Where you can receive uh, the word of God and, and you can grow in your faith. Amen. Won't you come today? Amen. Amen. Now, those of you who are joining or looking by, you want to join by YouTube, I mean by Facebook, uh, our website, amen, uh, www.greatergalileembc.com, amen. And we will gladly accept your call, amen. We will gladly send you where you want to go if you want to be a part of this church. You can, won't you come?
God bless you. God keep you with our prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for this, another opportunity to share your word. We pray, God, that something was said and done that will help those who are searching and want to be saved. Help them understand. Help them understand that God has a plan. Even after they come to, in the, to the knowledge of knowing uh, who you are. Father God, we know. Help them understand that you have a plan for their lives. And we'll be so careful to give you the praise, honor, and glory. Father God, right now we ask that you bless those who are uh, the health care workers, Father God, who are working around the clock, Father. Bless those doctors who are striving and have a great concern for their patients, Father. We pray that you give them the knowledge and the wisdom to carry on, Father God, in doing what you have called them to do. And then, Father God, help those churches, help our churches, Father God, who are striving to stay and to be what you have called us to be. Father God, it's something we've never experienced, but it's, almost, it's been almost a year. And we're still standing, Father, and we thank you so much for that. We do not take that for granted because we know anything can happen, but we know who's in charge of everything. And we ask right now that you just bless, oh God, in the ways that only you can. Now, Father, we ask that your grace and the sweet communion of your spirit will rest, rule, and abide with each one of us under the sound of my voice. Until we come together again in Jesus' name, amen.